This time on Driveway Finds, we get this LS2 in R56 Chevy and try to make it to the burnout pit for LS Fest 2024. Dude, this is hilarious. Oh, yes! See ya. Follow Dustin, Brito, and Jose as we try to survive this crazy journey to LS Fest. On the last episode, we decided to go modern power with a fuel-injected LS2. We pulled out the blown-up big block and started to survey and clean our new motor. When we got this engine, a bunch of the threads were stripped out of the block. The best way to repair them is with these things called time certs, and that basically puts a brand new threaded hole in the block. And the reason they're called time certs is because they're really time-consuming. There's a couple things we need to do to this LS2 before we can put boost to it. But the first thing is we're gonna disassemble it down to just a crank in block, check all the bearings and do a few other things before we add boost. Frito's gonna show you guys what he does to gap and install piston rings. So whenever I do this, I like to have the gaps uh, facing down. It makes it a little bit easier to keep track. When you take the piston itself, I like to do the lower rings first. And I like to really make, really make sure they're square in the board. And get a visual cue all the way around. And we'll just go get our feeler gauges and see what our gap is. I'm gonna tell you right now that's 19 or 20. So now we're gonna open these up to about 30 thousandths. Um, you're only actually supposed to file one side. So you just line it up like that. It's an exact science, but it's a bit of guesswork with this wheel. So you just don't want to take too much, but if it's 31 thousandths and not 30, who cares? We just had to do that 16 more times. And yes, this was time consuming, but now Brito is going to throw in those pistons. So normally with other ring compressors, you have to really kind of beat the piston in. These just taper. They start out nice and big. And you see that just helped itself in. And like that, you're in. Um, no beating, no uh, unnecessary force. Fingers crossed that this motor stays together at LS Fest, and I'm super excited to show you guys the paint job that we've dreamed up for this LS. I'm head of the art department here at Driveway Finds, and we decided to do something historic and patriotic at the same time. I think it was in like popular hot rodding or something like that when they did this to Project X. But I'm really hoping that the blue stayed on the front. I'm really excited about this thing. We do have to put some stars on the front of it. That's actually not bad. That actually came out pretty good. Dude, this is hilarious. It's actually not that bad. I think this is the most patriotic I've ever been in my life. It's actually pretty good. Right? I mean, This idea really came out of nowhere. Thought it would be kind of fun to do something a little funky for the 56. Especially we're going to LS Fest, you know, it's just like a big party. There's only certain things that are gonna draw us out in this cold, rainy shop and that's to put this patriotic LS in our 56 Chevy. We've got a lot of work ahead of us. We have to, it's basically just mocked up right now. So we have to, you know, take the heads back off, take the oil pan back off and final everything, push rods, rockers, all, every, everything. So we have quite a bit of building to do. We also have to fit it into the 56. We're anticipating that it's not gonna be a big deal, but something always goes wrong, right? I have low we'll expectations, my, which are probably high. My expectations are this engine sitting in the engine compartment, literally nothing bolted down but mocked up by the end of the day. That should be doable. We could get further than that, but we're not. Easy, easy. Yeah. Come on now, low expectations. Low, low expectations. expectations. We're making really good headway on the 56 and we're about to start torquing down all of the head bolts. Hopefully our time search will hold. We want to get this thing mocked up and in the 56 as soon as possible. 
Looks like we found a couple more stripped holes. Nice. Okay, there goes another one. Uh, this is the threads. That's the engine block. The block. So this is the engine block here. It's not supposed to be in my hand. It's supposed to still be in the engine. Yeah, uh, so unfortunately, we are gonna have to take this head off again. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay. One successful. Five. Here's another middle one, you ready? Yeah, I'm gonna watch it explode. Oh. Don't worry, I'm ready to mark it. I'm ready to mark it. Oh! Yeah, but, One successful one. But like, is it, we still got 10. Is it gonna do it twice? Oh. Ooh, God, that really moved a lot. That's fine. Okay, so that one's good. So good. we got that's three that went bad. Still have the other side to do. Remember we were having that little conversation with you guys earlier about how you try to plan everything out and something always goes wrong. Well, we found the first thing that went wrong. But it's okay, it's okay. We got plenty of time to fix it, plenty of time before LS Fest. We're gonna be okay. Trips. I mean, we have a boost. See ya. Oh. Oh, there See we go. See ya. All we can do is keep moving forward, get the motor in there. We're gonna fix all this stuff down the road. We're not gonna let this engine slow us down. This will be the first time that it will be going into the 56 and we're really thinking it's gonna be easy. It's, it had a big block in it, it had a V8 in it, it should be no problem. The question is, okay, okay um, that looks awful and like it's never gonna fit. So uh, let's, let's keep going, let's keep trying. Okay. Maybe it'll just find its home. Oh, it just did. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep okay, going. Okay, hold on, we're in the firewall. Let's just, let's we're just jump on. Just, we'll just keep going. There we go, there we go. We have to move the engine forward. Yeah. That's lame. Yeah, this is why we're doing this now. We got the engine in. We had to move these mounts back one hole, which isn't a super big deal. We might have to slot the holes in our transmission mount and hopefully our drive shaft will fit. The engine is about like a half an inch further forward, which isn't really that much. Now we're gonna put the supercharger on here to see what our firewall clearance is gonna be. Uh, unfortunately, we are gonna have to take the motor back out because of our unfortunate stripped uh, head bolt threads. But this is just a mock-up just to see if things are gonna fit. They're like, oh, it's fine. It's gonna have plenty of room. It's gonna hit. Yep, hits. Yeah. I didn't think it was gonna be like this far off. Cause people put LS's in all kinds of vehicles. I didn't think it was gonna be this, this far off. This is yeah, LS, a lot worse than I thought. Yeah. They don't just fall right in folks. The LS's mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. like the end of the engine block is also like the end of the heads. So with a big block, you have like a couple, two or three inches extra. To add insult to injury, after stripping out half of the bolts in our engine block, we go to put it in and it's really a lot further off than we thought. We don't always have the answers and mock-up is a key part of putting a car together and we're just contemplating what we need to change right now. really thought this was going to be a lot easier. Remember what we were talking about this morning? Remember that? How we were saying that something was going to go wrong and we just don't know it yet? Except for everything. Well, here's another five. Everything went wrong. Five things to add to the list. That's a good amount of clearance. That's the right amount of clearance. We put the supercharger back on to test fit everything, and it looks like we might have found the final resting place for this engine. And we get to put on our retro Terminator X throttle bodies. Oh, okay, things are looking up. Things are looking great. That was one of my main concerns was what we were gonna do to hide the wiring because we do want these to still look like carburetors. They do, they look great. I love that we're putting this onto these. <laughs> Very That's carburetor. just our style. I mean, it looks fantastic. It looks, like, it looks just 
Yeah. This looks amazing. Like, where's the fuel? You know what? Oh, it's right here. This makes all the tears shed worth it. Right. Uh, you want to try the exhaust now? Yeah. Well, these, obviously, these need to get modified. These are our old big block headers. We were expecting to cut these flanges off, kind of move the pipes around a little bit, and hopefully make them work with the LS bolt pattern. These, these were sitting, like, right here. Yeah, they were, like, And um, <laughs> we're at a cruise this summer, and this guy's like, hey, 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 hey. And I had my tire turned, and I'm just sitting there idling, because in a cruise, you're just, like, waiting for the people in front of you to go. And the tire was actually melting. It was melting, so. We have to have fender wall headers on our 56. So we're gonna have to modify big block ones because they don't make ones for LSs yet. Our plan is to take the big block headers, cut the flanges off, and put on LS bolt pattern flanges. Now hopefully the pipes are gonna be able to move around just enough for this to work. And of course, you guessed it, the headers are running into our brake lines. We're redoing these brake lines so that they're not super close anymore. It's, it's really nothing. We just have to do um, exhaust, uh, steering, brakes, oil pan, heads. Now, it's, it, we just build the whole car again. No big deal. It's like every little thing we're mentioning. It's just like a half day project. Yeah. It's like half a step forward, five steps back. Yeah. Like I said, it's like you try as hard as you can to build this stuff in your head, but when it comes to reality, it's just, sometimes it just doesn't work out. Okay, right. this, okay, we're doing good here. Look, you guys, victory is upon us. This just needs to get cut. Since this is pulled forward like this, we got a little bit of distance away from the car here, which is great. These are all slid in enough. some major snacks today but you know through and through I think we can we can get it done we just have to start dedicating a little bit more time to this than we thought yeah definitely some big roadblocks here seriously but this this is a big triumph at least having this one side this one header done ish at least it fits right we got it bolt literally bolted to the engine which is amazing it's definitely a lot of work to do to get this motor set in its final position you know drive shaft transmission cross remember brake lines now we didn't have to we were expecting to not even touch any of the brake system, but we're, we're of sort course. Of back to square. Here we are. We're back to square two. Yeah. It's okay. You know, it, it feels good to get that done. Yeah. That, that's that's great. If we can get this side and it looks amazing going, that would be awesome. If this if this was the only thing we had to do, this this thing would be done by like probably Friday, with everything we have to do. But since, you know, I have a full-time job, he has a full-time job, I have three kids. I mean, that's the thing is, know. is yeah, I mean, you could tell how many other projects we've been putting off yeah. just to work on the 56. I mean, I just bought a 68 Mustang probably like three, four weeks ago. I've done basically nothing to it. We yeah. wanted to drive it like super, super bad uh, and dedicated all my time to this. I mean, we have this, we have... You know, all the reels that we make for driveway finds, all the videos yeah, that I'm, That's become a full-time job. Yeah, all the videos I'm editing for YouTube, and I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff to do. And this is this is kind of our number one priority right now. We, we gotta get this thing done. We gotta get it to LS Fest. This is truly going to be a one-of-a-kind build. I mean, an old dirt track car with an LS in it, and a blower with the Holley Terminator X. You know, we wanna show everybody, and Holley, that the 56 really is one of a kind, and so is driveway finds. I'm gonna be honest, with all this stuff, with this blower, with these, do you even notice the LS down there? I do, I mean, because, I mean, look because at it, the American red, white, and blue. So you know what, maybe it's but a good that's thing. that's camouflage. We did that, that red, white, and blue is LS camouflage. I think it's great. And then we're also gonna do some cool valve covers up here that are also gonna kinda carry on the red, white, and blue right here. Those are gonna look great. I'm, I'm wanna... super excited for this thing. I think it, at the burnout contest, is also gonna be great. You know, I'm just excited to freaking, I'm just excited to get this thing done. I'm excited to have those tires just, 
you know, up in smoke to where you can't even see the 56 anymore. One of the things about putting this LS in our 56, that took a little bit of calculating was the whole bell housing clutch situation. We still wanted to run our Muncie. So the difference between an LS and a big block is an LS crank is 400 thousandths shorter than a big block crank. So the cool thing is, is this quick time bell housing actually makes up that difference. So everything that Dustin said is just great, fine and dandy. I'm just excited that we don't have a massive crack down our scatter shield. One more test fit, this time with the transmission bolted on and our new motor mounts before we pull everything out to do more time certs. And we're also gonna check the fit of our new headers. So we're really trying to fit, trying to cram these fender well headers into this car. Uh, they are the original ones from the big block. We've just been doing some modifications, so. I have this side wrapped. It's getting ready to get painted right now. Um, I've just really been struggling with this, trying to get it to where it's actually a fender well header inside the fender well. Unfortunately, we're pulling the engine out again because we have to fix the head studs. Even though we ran a tap through a lot of the holes for our head studs, they ended up not being good enough. Uh, and when we went to do our final torque, um, usually somewhere around 50 pounds, second of the three stages, they just stripped right out. Yeah, you guys saw the wrench just keep spinning. And we think the reason why they call them time certs is because they take a lot of time. They're time consuming. Yeah, so that's gonna be another couple hours of our day and hopefully the oil pan's gonna show up and we can put the 56 engine in for the final time. While Brito's doing the time certs, I'm gonna start assembling the new gas tank for the 56. Now this is the old tank that was in our 56 Chevy, and we used an on-the-frame pump for our carburetors. This was totally fine, no big deal, worked great, but now that we're switching to the Terminator X's, we're gonna use an intake pump, and this is our little guy here. This pump supports up to 800 horsepower, we're, we're gonna make like around 800 horsepower, right? I mean like, we don't know what the big block made, but we think it was kind of a lot. Um, what if this is better? What if this is like a lot better? And what's cool about this new tank is it comes with a sender as well that's already the right ohms for our stock gauge. You know how much we love all of our factory stuff. All we have to do is get the sender to the right length and we have to get the fuel pump installed on our uh, pickup here and it's got a return, a sender, and a vent. This is gonna be great for the 56. We're not gonna have any fuel starvation. It's not gonna slosh around like it did in this tank. Uh, it's gonna be great because we do wanna take this thing to the dirt track someday. It's not just for the drag strip or the burnout contest. I wanna take it anywhere, anywhere you can drive a car. I wanna take it to King of Hammers. We wanna take it everywhere. Can you imagine this in King of Hammers? People are like, wait, what? Let's check back in with Brito on torquing down the cylinder heads. I am over torquing cylinder heads. I hope this is the last time. I hope these things don't fail. That was the one I was worried about. Last one. This one has a nut cert, so, or a time cert. No worries. Yes. This is a nice, brand new oil pan. Look at that. It's like nice and shiny on the inside. Perfectly clean. It would really be a shame if somebody had to paint it red, white, and blue. Oh no, don't worry, you didn't rewind the video. We're just putting in this engine for like the 14th time. Oh yeah, and seeing if it will clear the steering now. Oh, 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 oh yes! Oh wow, this yes, oh. yes! Okay, yes! Oh, oh my god! It's better. It's better, how's it on Jose's side? Yeah, you can hide a credit card. You just slide the credit card. Okay, so oil pan's good. Thank you, Holly. I can finally say I feel like we're actually making some headway on this project. We're actually moving forward. We're not done with the patriotic theme just yet. We're gonna take these Holly valve covers and spruce them up a bit.
This upper alternator bracket is disgusting. We do not want this on our car. We're trying to hide stuff like this. This lower one we like, but it won't fit in our car. There is nothing we can buy off the shelf that will work, so we're gonna have to make something. So me and Dustin uh, last night kind of came up with this idea together. We want a really low mount. We want something that's out of the way, something that fits, that's not giant and up here at the very top. But what's nice is it's a nice clean spot for it to be. Dude, this is gonna just be like done today. Not, not really, because I'm gonna have to go to dinner, but. Wow, that's cool. I have the task of trying to combine these two wiring harnesses together because Holly doesn't make a direct Terminator X dual throttle body LS controlled system. This is gonna be interesting. Let's see if I can do it. I don't know, what do you think? I think you'll do it fine and I'll just work on other shit and we'll be happy. We'll see what happens. This is gonna take some research. While Dustin's doing the wiring, I am getting to work on the steering box and getting it fitted in here and cut down. This is our old, just really clapped out steering box that when we turned was like, like that. So I'm uh, working on, just about ready to pull it out. Got to drop it down so I can get the pitman arm off. But, um, and then we have this one that our friend actually gave us. Um, I restored it with a can of black spray paint and we're gonna fill it full of grease, but it is so much better. It's not like crunchy and sound, it doesn't sound like the gears are uh, coming apart as you're turning. So we're really excited for this upgrade. I am at least. Now, when I started pumping grease into this gearbox, water started pouring out. This might be tomorrow's real. There's water from a glacier in Alaska. So much better. Our other one was, it wasn't really noticeable when we were driving, but um, man, it was like, I don't know how to describe it, crunchy. Like, it felt like the gear was stripping every time you turned it. Oh yeah. I mean, now that all the water's out of it, it's definitely got a little less play in it. This is great. This is way better than our other one. Our other one actually, we, um, dived and got it uh, from the Titanic. Uh, so this one's a lot better. We're not the only ones prepping for LS Fest. Remember Jose's Ford Courier, the one that had the small block Chevy in it? Let's check in with him and see how much progress he's made. We bought this with the sole purpose of making it to Holly LS Fest. It had a small block in it. So somebody already did all this crazy fabrication to get a small block in there. And I didn't even try to get it running. We just pulled it straight out. Went to the junkyard, picked up a 5.3, and shoved it in there. Made it work. It still has the Turbo 350 and driveline, all that stuff that the previous owner had done, I guess. But uh, yeah, I just shoved a carbureted LS in there and got it to run. All this stuff's in the way. Here we go. First this time is, ever. This is a Ford Courier. First time on the street, right here. The audio isn't that good because we don't have a windshield. But for the first time being on the street, the Courier is doing awesome. It was kicking. Let's go. I don't know how many of you have gone on a test drive in an LS swap Ford Courier with no front windshield, but it's pretty riveting. I told Jose to slow down and pull over so we could do a test burnout, but something else happened. No brakes? What happened? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
dude in the Tesla was like, what the fuck? I guess the Kroger's brakes still need a little bit of work. It is only the first test drive. <laughs> All right, Jose, I want you to do it like your life depends on it. Like your life depends on it. You're good. Jose still has some work to do, so let's get back to the 56. The passenger side of the 56 is a letter because when it was on the track, that was the side that the crowd saw. And this side has nothing. Now we do want to letter it with driveway fines, but before we did that, we wanted to change the fender because the old ones like cut out for, you know, dirt track tire and all that kind of stuff. And obviously the stock fender is so much better. We got some paint paint match to this same kind of red-ish yeah, yeah. color. And it, we're gonna have the, the letters done in a very vintage way. Yeah, it's gonna kind of match the other side, but just be a little bit neater. We're gonna have to faux Tina this fender and we're gonna show you guys how we do it. I'm gonna start by laying down this black paint first on our new fender. And as you can see, this is nasty. And look how big that opening is compared to our new fender. And we're gonna go through, we're gonna maybe put some grease or possibly some water to create kind of that loose paint effect so that we can have this kind of chipping that this fender has. And we're just gonna take our time and, you know, get really artistic with it. I like to use grease to mask off some of the rust spots. Other people use mustard, but let's be honest, mustard is disgusting. So I'm gonna use grease. The reason why you use grease instead of something like masking tape is the grease makes things look more natural. You want your patina to look natural. We're just trying to make it look like all this stuff happened naturally because after all, mother nature did paint this fender. We're gonna use all kinds of different objects, whatever we can find around us, because we want all these chips and scratches to look different from each other. here just a slight rub through on the peak of the fender it's coming out really good I'm really liking how this is looking especially around the areas where they're raised you get that kind of high contact so what I did to create this is it's really easy I just did some brake clean I'm gonna do it to this part here just because this is an just because this is like a high contact area that's killer, dude. Good job. So I'm going to be honest. If I would have been on like vacation and I would have come back and this was, you know, say the car was all together and, you know, this fender happened to have been on it and you didn't tell me, I would have noticed, but I wouldn't have noticed right away. It would have taken me like a while. The, the rub through here is really, just really good. We needed to move our engine forward probably about five inches so we didn't really want to change where our cross member was so i made this cross member transmission extension mount whatever you want to call it so it's it's super beefy um i just have to weld it in now and it should really accommodate us putting other engines back in this thing like should be able to take a big block back in the same location without even unbolting this in the future
Yes, the 56 is leaving the shop, however, not under its own power because the 56 has a very special field trip to go on. We're taking it to a really good friend of ours, Sparky Howard, who has been part of racing for his whole life. This is the car that he still races to this day, following in his dad's footsteps who raced before him. Just one look at his awesome shop and we knew he would be the right person to hand letter the 56. You wanna stack that? Stack, I think stacked. Okay. Cause that's how that is, Davis and auto body. So it could be like driveway behind. Yeah. It's all on film. I misspell it. <laughs> that's right. Let's see, look right Hold on. We're not gonna show you the lettering just yet. That's gonna be for the next episode where you guys are gonna see us finally finish out the 56 and see if it actually runs and drives and if we make it in time for LS Fest.